The purpose of this video demonstration is to show the reporting capability within Hazmap 3D, the fire and gas mapping software brought to you by Micropack Engineering. We're going to take off where the one of the previous videos uh, left us, um, having carried out an assessment of this uh, fictional offshore processing facility. The assessment has been carried out using ISATR84 and the guidelines within that, that document. So if we have a look at our project rules, you can see that the method which has been applied is the TR8407 uh, and the variant obviously applied is offshore, which is the same as what can typically be applied in uh, onshore congested areas due to the escalation potential. The actual specifics of this guidance document are out with this particular video. Um, however, there is another video on compliance and how Hazmap 3D is one of the few direct routes to compliance with most of the guidance documents that are available in the uh, petrochemical industry. But for the purpose of reporting, one of the important things we need to review is the first of all the fire grades that we're applying. So within this assessment we had grades A, B and C and these are the target fire sizes that we can see applied um, in this specific assessment. We can see this in action when we look at our grade map. So if I turn the grades on, we can see our grades A, B and C throughout the process area. Also present within this assessment, if I turn the grades off just to clear up the 3D view, we have all of our flame detectors which have been applied. So if I double click on this detector here, obviously we're given a represent representation of that device and the field of view that can afford. Uh, this particular device is the Draeger Flame 5000. However, each flame detector has been um, selected as a, a different ha manufacturer and model. Um, so we see the Draeger Flame 3000 with this one and so on and so forth. We have a Detronics unit here, a Honeywell unit here, the, the Fire Sentry unit, uh, and so on and so forth. But when we produce the report, you'll be able to see a list of all the different technologies and devices which have been applied in this assessment. And obviously Hazmat 3D has the capability to assess any number of different fire detectors all within the same assessment to any number of different fire grades. Um, up to 16 different sizes of fire can all be assessed within exactly the same assessment. And on this subject, when we open up one of our flame detector footprints, you, you're essentially given a representative cone, but this doesn't show the entire detection capability of that device. And that's really important in the assessment, uh, the assessment stage of the review. We can make this representative cone uh, bigger and smaller as we wish, if we make it 60%, for example, or back up to 100%. But the important thing is that each of these flame detectors will have different detection characteristics to different fire sizes, and we can't limit in one single assessment uh, to a single fire size. We have to be able to assess lots of different fire sizes in a single assessment, and that's where Hazmap's power really comes into its own. Another important feature to note, which will become clear when we look at the actual report, is the, the deck elevation. So within a report, it's going to export the coordinates of the device, but also the elevation of each device. But sometimes devices, so if we look at FD007, you can actually see that this flame detector is on a raised platform. Now the general deck area is going to obviously be specified when we go to generate the report, but this flame detector is on a raised platform. So we would essentially tell the software the specific Z value, the Z elevation, so that when the report is generated, we can get an elevation above local deck, which is absolutely accurate and very important for the engineers who are reviewing the report. So let's go ahead and print our report. I'm just going to right click on the assessment module here. And print report. Okay, so we have various options here to print. For the purpose of the demonstration, I'm just going to include all of the options there. And we're going to print all uh, elevations so that we can get a good um, holistic view of the coverage within this area. If you only wanted to print one slice, you can obviously select your representative slice that you would like to be generated within the report. But as I say, we'll just include all steps within this assessment. I'm also going to output the, ass the assessment report to RTF. 
Now this means that the report can be exported straight into your working Word document. And we're going to demonstrate that and we feel that's very, very useful from an engineering point of view. Um, so that you can, you're not having to deal with a separate Excel spreadsheet or a separate PDF. You can export the report straight from Hazmat 3D into your working Word document. So let's do that now. So initially I'm going to print it to PDF. And here we have our report. So we obviously have the percentages which have been produced for the grades A, B and C. Um, control action to it of N. Um, we also have the uh, sufficient control action but with a late alarm. Obviously that is dictated straight from the target fire sizes and is a really good demonstration of the fact we have multiple different fire sizes all within the same assessment. The orange values here is for alarm only coverage because it's a 2 out of N voted system. Um, the brown coverage that we have here is where you only get 1 out of N uh, and you actually have to wait for the target fire size to increase beyond the targeted fire size before you get that alarm. And the red coverage is our blind spots within the area. We also have our detector contributions within the area, so we can see the impact of the coverage of that detector from a 1 out of N standpoint, 2 out of N and greater than 2 out of N. And we can also see the impact when that detector is removed and how that can affect the 1 out of N, 2 out of N and more than 2 out of N coverage. And that's very, very useful from an engineering standpoint. We then see the details of the specific devices, along with tag numbers, detector technologies and manufacturers, uh, the coordinates of the devices along with the elevation, and again this is specific to where the local deck is, as previously specified within each individual flame detector. Um, and we also have the pan and tilt and the, orienta the orientation uh, and the vertical um, tilt of the detector. We then have our automatically generated grade map of the area. So this is an automatically generally generated 2D plot plan from the 3D model. Um, and in this, it's a very quick and very useful way to have a look at what grades each piece of equipment is graded in a recognisable way to the engineer of that specific platform or asset. So we can see our grade A volumes here, our grade B volume, grade C, and a, couple, and a grade A and a couple of grade B pieces of equipment down here. We can also see the excluded areas from the assessment. So if we go back to our assessment, obviously these represent our entire modules here, which we obviously don't want to assess. So as we scroll through the assessment, we move up and down each layer, and this essentially gives us a very, very good um, representation of the coverage afforded throughout the area. And in order to put this straight into our working Word document. I'm just going to go to insert. Uh, it actually seems I'm in the wrong file location there. Um, if we go to, that's my 3D projects. Ah, there it is there. So we insert straight into our Word document, and here we go. So obviously, not every time you would want it's not every time that you would want to include um, all levels of the assessment and all slices, um, because obviously it can become quite quite heavy on information. There, um, you might want to just select a representative Z. Um, obviously, you can do that within Hazmat, no problem at all. You may also want to include some screenshots of the 3D environment, and that's very easy within Hazmat. You can simply select the camera tool, take your photo, and paste that straight into your report, as and when you find the angles that suitably represent the coverage afforded. So we'll take another little photo of that and paste that into the report. With gas detection, we follow exactly the same process. So if we um, just minimize our flame assessment report there. Um, and if we have a look at our gas coverage, um, within this area we're actually using simple coverage using dense and dilute cloud. Um, now I'm not going to go into the specifics of that particular methodology. Um, if we have a look in the grades here, 
you can see how this is calculated. But we're going to cover that separately in another video um, on compliance as mentioned previously. But for the purpose of reporting, we're just going to print our report again, um, include all layers, and go ahead print this to PDF. Slightly different information here. Um, obviously we want high, the diameter of the high gas cloud, the low gas cloud, the voting structure, whether it's high and low, whether it's too high, too low, um, details of the methodology, detail of the coverage. Um, and then as before, we want our grade map slice and then our assessment slices, um, along with our detector locations obviously being represented uh, on the plot plan. And again, this can be pasted directly into the report um, to make it very, very easy for the engineer and very quick um, to actually produce the detection report. If you would like further information on HAZMAP, please feel free to get in touch with myself or any of my colleagues at Micropack Engineering um, by contacting sales at micropack.co.uk um, or you can check out the website www.micropack.co.uk and we'll be glad to help you out. Uh, be sure to check out our video on compliance on the various different flame detection methodologies and gas detection methodologies which can be followed and that will be being uploaded very shortly.